Okay guys, well I had actually uploaded a video about this article and when I looked into it a little bit further I realised that there's not enough to verify any of the information. I had a look at the professor that was making the statement in the article about this uh, media and there's just not enough to say that this has anything that can really verify it as an event that's taken place. However, in saying that, it is just a good example of how you have these half-truths that poison the well of information. What this type of information does, this white noise information, is just create more confusion and, as I said, more white noise for people to have to sift through. And this is what the establishment love. And they use all the... Uh, you know, most common websites that we take our information from. And most of the time, um, these websites are sharing this information unknowingly also because they just don't go and take the time to look into the information. Now, I'm not saying that this event didn't occur. I'm just saying that according to this article and the information in it, there's not enough information to say that we can, you know, see that it did occur. It's just hearsay, there's no photo, and there is a source that we cannot verify, this professor that cannot be verified. But there are other incidents that are happening since the perihelion of Ison. Now, the perihelion of Ison was the 28th, and since that time... We've seen the sun start getting a little bit unsettled again. But not only that, we're actually now responding to the sun once again. Whereas before it was all very quiet. Now we're starting to feel some of this energy. So this has all begun since ice on past the sun. Now... According to spaceweather.com, they are saying that ISON is fading once again. And I do not believe that the energy of ISON is fading out. And even if this energy cannot be photographed by their cameras, means nothing. Because we are dealing with many different energies here. And mind you, a lot of the energies that we're dealing with they are measuring and not releasing the data because we are seeing energy hit our planet that doesn't correlate to the energy of the sun. So there is another energy that we are feeling and that NASA and these astrophysicists don't want to basically acknowledge. Well, anyone that's watching the space weather, anyone that has been watching the sun for the last few years sees that the data was starting to really not match up within the last six months especially, time and time again. And so when NASA wants to call it according to a couple of their cameras that it looks like ISON is dead and disintegrated, then I'm sorry, I'm not willing to take that, you know, and let you know, let's just not forget how many times they get it wrong. I mean, remember ISON was supposed to have been destroyed because it's just an icy snowball, according to Tony. And, you know, they don't want to have to explain why they got that wrong. You know, they just keep saying, oh, it's doing what we don't understand. Oh, it's doing something that we don't quite understand there. Well, that's not good enough, guys. You proclaim to be the holy grail of space weather and um, solar dynamics, but it seems that you constantly get it wrong and then you're not made to be accountable for your inaccurate theories. You know, just like the cannibal CME that we were told by space weather uh, was coming to hit the planet and it never arrived. And as I said, this is just, is, you know, another confirmation that the data and the sun activity doesn't add up. And this is why they start trying to create these new types of phenomena like cannibal CMEs. Okay, so as far as I'm concerned, the energy of ISON is far, 
far from gone. And in fact, the influence, the electrical charge and influence um, of ISON is going to be felt for a long time yet. And in, we're still feeling it. As I mentioned, the uh, activity on the sun now and the way we are feeling the effects of the activity is definitely changed since perihelion. And, um, you know, as I said, even though we get these kind of, you know, um, white noise articles that just throw information out there to have us all confused, there are other interesting articles. Now, this one was on Fox News, but it's quite interesting because the guy, um, the father of this young boy, uh, he is kind of wanting a laboratory to do a proper analysis on it because the lab that the agency, the establishment did the analysis with, came back as inconclusive. So we can basically know that that means they don't want to say that it's a meteorite, but they're not actually saying it's not a meteorite. And the father says that it's magnetic. So this happened on the 27th. So this was just, I think, the day before perihelion with ice on as well. So just some other things to you know, pay attention to. Um, we also had an earthquake in my area, which is very rare, last night. So that's very interesting. And I've noticed that there is an uptick in the earthquake activity again, just on my feed with people sharing the latest earthquake information. So I think that, uh, you know, we are going to still see the influence of ice on being felt on our planet and the sun and even more so now. So just prepare to see some more you know pretty unusual phenomena in the atmosphere i think and some more you know big um changes with um you know earth changes and weather events and other things along those lines so just basically heads up everyone because um things are starting to get interesting well i will uh link all of the articles underneath guys and you can check them out yourself. And as always, peace out.